Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Montpelier, Vermont, for the ORCA presentation of the 3rd of July uh, celebration here in downtown Montpelier. My first guest of the evening is Dan Groberg. Dan is the, in charge of Montpelier Alive. Dan, first and foremost, congratulations. Another spectacular event, something for everybody. First of all, hello, and tell us about it. Thank you so much. We're at our 20th annual July 3rd celebration in downtown Montpelier. It's always a fun event. We have uh, 10 or 15,000 people show up and looks like the Montpelier Mile is starting right now, leading off the race with a fun mile road race. We have fireworks, we have a great parade. It's a whole lot of fun for the whole community. You know, this has been such a major event in all over Vermont. You get people from everywhere here, don't you? We do. It's been named one of the top 10 summer events in Vermont and we're really proud to have people from all over Vermont here tonight. Now, Dan, this is not something that you start planning a week or two in advance. How much work goes into this and when does it start? We had our first meeting in mid-December to start planning for this year and it's a huge amount of work with a, a big team of uh, staff and volunteers and my board who help out and we obviously have to thank all our sponsors to make it possible. You know, you get the gratitude of everybody in the community, but the fact of the matter is that it's this kind of event that brings families together and the idea that we can broadcast this and live stream it really opens it up to the entire world doesn't it it's awesome we're happy to have people who might not be able to be down here in person being able to tune in and watch and join us dan is there one particular float or one particular uh marching band you think we should look for tonight you know there's a lot of fun floats and i encourage people to vote for their favorite because their favorite float can win a thousand dollars tonight thanks to union mutual go on montpelieralive.org slash vote montpelieralive.org slash vote and you can vote for your favorite to win Outstanding. Thank you, Dan. Thank you very much for stopping by Thank today. Thank you so much for having me. Well, once again, we welcome you here in downtown Montpelier. I have another guest coming up. Lawrence, you want to step up, please? I do, sir. You want to grab that microphone right there, Lawrence? Nope, the one right here. Yep. Now, tell us, Lawrence, tell us about what you do and why you're here. Well, um, first of all, I would like to say uh, welcome to Montpelier, and um, this is a great day, July 3rd. Uh, what my wife and I do, we do a television show for and about people with special needs called Able Then On Air. And Able Then On Air encompasses, uh, you know, we've been doing this for about seven years in, in the town of Montpelier, but I've been a journalist for 25 years doing this type of uh, humanistic journalism. And uh, we've had a lot of Montpelier and Vermont organizations, uh, including Green Mountain Support Services, which funds our uh, program, as well as Washington County Mental Health and um, Champlain Community Services. And uh, we focus on the abilities of people, not disabilities of people. So tell us about your program and when is it on? Um, Ableton on Air can be seen uh, several times uh, a week uh, on Channel 15 as well as Channel 17 in uh, Channel 15 in Montpelier and Channel 17 in um, Burlington. Uh, uh, on the Meeting TV uh, network. Um, but, you know, the reason why we do this type of program is because it's extremely important because, um, you know, people with special needs need advocacy, and that's why we do it. That's the main reason why Outstanding. we do Outstanding. Lawrence, thank you very much for joining us today. Good luck with your program. Okay. Uh, and you have a wonderful holiday. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you, and, and uh, have a wonderful event. Thank you, Lawrence. Well, as you can hear in the background, we've got our milers uh, just coming back the other way. This would be a good opportunity for me to introduce my co-host today. With me today is Evie Concerta. Evie, good morning, or afternoon, I should say. Hello. I'll let you sit down. I'll join you. You? Good, how are you? I'm terrific. Thank you for very much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Let's talk about you and what's going on in your world this summer. Okay. Um, I'm just, this summer, mainly I'm working a lot to make money before college. You know, as one does the summer before, after senior year. And so, let's talk about where you're headed. Um, so I'm going to a small school in Phil just outside of Philadelphia called Bryn Mawr College. It's an all-women's college. You know, I look back, and let me share with you my experience. 
I graduated from high school in 1972, and I was getting ready to go to Norwich, and it was an entirely different <laughs> type of preparation. Uh, so we won't talk about that, but I'm okay. very excited for you. Thank I'm you. I'm excited to have you here today. I think one of the things that I enjoy about a parade is that ever since I was little, my grandmother always used to say that you, you see the people you never see during the year at funerals and parades. <laughs> now, you know, there's a little difference in our age. Tell me about parades. Do you enjoy parades? Have they been a part of your life? Tell me about it. Yeah, I mean, I really like parades. They didn't really start be becoming a big part of my life until I moved to Montpelier oh. um, in about 2011, I think sounds about right. Um, I lived in Burlington and they didn't really do anything for the 4th of July, but then I got to Montpelier and realized that there was this huge culture of like coming down for the 3rd of July parade and seeing everyone and going to the vendors and like even being in the parade if you get a chance to. So that's when I started getting more involved with it. Oh, that's very cool. <laughs> I, I like that. Uh, you know, as we, as we look forward to the summer, uh, there are major events in Vermont. And as Dan told us early on, this has been earmarked as one of the major events in Vermont. Yeah. And I think there are 14 of them, I think, something like that. <laughs> uh, this attracts people of all ages. Mm -hmm. And although it's not back to back, with the Heritage Festival, it does serve to bring a lot of people back to the area. Yeah. And as I mentioned to Dan, with Orca live streaming this, we're in contact all over the world. Yeah. So I'm sure there's some service men and women that are mm -hmm. watching this, mm -hmm. and it's just, it's a wonderful atmosphere. It is, yeah. It's a fun thing to do. Yeah. And, uh, it, it does, it expands the whole parameter of this particular event. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully next year, if you're still in Philadelphia, you'll be watching it down there. Yeah, or I'll even get to come back. Yeah, I think it just really showcases just how close-knit of a community Montpelier really is. Ah, uh, very good point. Yeah. And, you know, as we talk about that, and that's a great point, how the internet actually helps us with that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. From far away. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, you could tune in, and here we are on Main Street of Montpelier. Yeah. Exactly. So as we look around here today, do you see a lot of your friends so far? Oh, yes. Oh, sure. It's hard to walk, you know, just a couple of feet without running into someone I know. Uh, and, you know, it's not like we've had a spectacular spring. Right. And so with the nice summer weather, oh, my gosh. Everyone's coming out. out. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Now, as the summer goes on, do you have some particular events that you're looking forward to? Um... I mean, personally, I'm going to go on some vacations and stuff. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. Sure. So it's going to be vacation time for you. And mm -hmm. uh, it, would this be your only broadcast gig for the summer? I think so. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, we're here for the opening event. And I'm excited <laughs> about it. Once again, I want to remind everybody that you are watching. Uh, the Montpelier 3rd of July festivities. You've just seen the mile uh, run through, and uh, you're listening and watching to Orca. You can find us on the internet at orcamedia.net. Tune us right in, and of course, on local uh, cable television, here we are. And uh, it's my privilege to be back here again. My name's Brent Curtis, and it's so much fun to be back with all my friends at Orca. Uh, what a great service these people do. Uh, when it's time to tune in at the various events, either at the Capitol or committee meetings, this is where I tune first, because I know that this is where I'm going to find the information that's very important for me as a Vermonter, as a voter, and most especially, as since I'm a member of this particular community. Uh, ORCA has been a, a mainstay when it comes to passing information and bringing, bring, actually bringing state government right into our living rooms. You've heard of a different couple of different programs that have, uh, have gone on here. Uh, Lawrence told us about his program, and there are a lot of other ones. Uh, so uh, it is a valuable uh, community service. And, uh, you know, have you ever paid much attention to it? I mean, my dad's the executive director, so it's kind of hard not to. Set up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, I personally have, Orca has been a big part of my life. When I was a middle schooler, I would do uh, show, I would come here and do TV shows about the environment, ah. Green Team News. And so that was a huge part of my middle school experience. And then, you know, as I get older, I'm just, I've been helping out. I do, I did the Halloween parade, commentated on that, and now I'm here doing this. So, yeah. 
Oh, that I'm is pretty involved. Great story. I love that. Yeah. Yeah, and I, and I think the key here is that this is open for everybody. It is, yeah. And it's a means of creativity. It's a means of development. And it's right here. And I think that probably the point that we want to emphasize is that it's free. Exactly, it's a free yeah. public <laughs> service. And there are so many dedicated people here that make everyone feel welcome. And certainly uh, everyone is welcome right here. Mm -hmm. But let's get down to brass tacks. We're broadcasting from Montpelier, Vermont. This is the smallest state capital population-wise in the country. We're also the only state capital that does not have a McDonald's. We are the closest state capital to a foreign border, and that's Canada. And I think that's kind of unique stuff right there. It is, yeah. It makes our quirky little city even more interesting. I know. You have to drive a whole, like, 10 minutes to McDonald's. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. Indeed it is. And so as we sit down here today, as I mentioned earlier and we were talking with Dan, uh, there are a lot of events. The, mm -hmm. the Capitol Lawn has been all laid out. Mm -hmm. Lots of things happening yeah. for the family, food trucks. And so uh, it's, an, it's an entire day's celebration. Yeah. Happy birthday, America, is what we want to <laughs> say. So we're getting ready. Uh, it, the information we have is the parade is warming up. And again, to remind you, you turn, you're tuned into Orca. And we are getting ready for the July 3rd event in Montpelier. Now, we've got a couple of little, I don't want to say slow folks because they're doing a great job. <laughs> we've got some runners coming down with a big smile on their face. Lots of fun for everyone. And again, the quintessential downtown America on the 4th of July. Something you can't find in Manhattan, you can't find it in Philadelphia. Yeah. Or Boston. <laughs> and as I watch these little, little tykes coming down, oh my gosh. How much fun is that? I'm not sure they're really tuned in with being in shape. They want the ice cream at the end of the run. That's what I'm thinking right there. And listen to this crowd cheering on the little ones. Oh, she's wet. <laughs> so the word is that, yep, the parade has uh, warmed, has fired up, I should say. And we're getting ready. They'll do one more pass and make sure the streets are clear. And again, as you can see behind us, lots of people filing back and forth. Most everybody came down about an hour and a half early, set up the chairs, staked out their claim. Uh, the coolers came out, the beverages uh, were set up, a few snacks, a few nibblies for everyone. Now, just a reminder for those of you who are tuned in by cell phone, if you've got your pet out here today, be very careful with those paws and the hot pavement. Make sure your pet is hydrated, just like you are. Mm -hmm. Always like to throw that in there at the last second. Hydrate your pet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Regis or Kathy Lee would have talked about Oh, Kathy Lee would have talked about that. Oh, yeah. Do you know who I'm talking about? No. I didn't. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll catch up. Okay. Then. So, again, looking around here, I think the crowd's getting, we get a little anticipation uh, starting to kick in. Uh, we're going to open up the parade today with the sailors from the USS Montpelier. And uh, that's always exciting when they come back. They'll be joined by Governor Phil Scott. What an interesting legislative year this has been. And, uh, of course, we're here in the hotbed. And I want to remind you one more time that uh, you can look to ORCA to get all the information from the various committees and lots of things going on in the Capitol. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Abby, I'm hearing some drums in the background. I think we yeah. got a little action coming. I think so, too. Thank you. <laughs> so as they start to come down beautiful Main Street, Montpelier, at uh, parade time, we're looking at just about 83 degrees, light breeze. The sun has dropped behind the bank making it easier for us to see, but it certainly does liven up the crowd. And it's all happening right here in downtown, downtown Montpelier. Now, a, a group of events going back to last Saturday uh, at the not quite 4th of July parade in Waterbury. We started on Saturday in Waterbury. Tonight, we're in Montpelier. Tomorrow, on the actual 4th, We'll have parades in uh, Warren. We'll have parades in Worcester. 
um, Morrisville. Oh, there's a whole list of them. And one of the unique things tomorrow, I bet you didn't know this. You, you'll tell me. Okay. Did you know that in Moscow, Vermont, they have a parade with no band, but they have a radio station play marching music. And as they, everybody turns on their, their radio to a particular channel, and everybody marches to the same song down Main Street in Moscow, Vermont, but they have two of the most entertaining things you can imagine. Number one, they have the lawn chair ladies. The lawn chair ladies come out in a syncopated dance move utilizing lawn chairs. Huh. Yeah. So that's always fun. And then later on in the parade, they have the library ladies with the book carts who come out with syncopated moves with the book cart. Wow. And they do this all to the music from a local radio station. Huh. I want you to bring that to Philadelphia with I you will, next year. I definitely. I mean, do you guys realize <laughs> what happens in Moscow, <laughs> Vermont? Yeah. First of all, they're not going to believe there's a Moscow, Vermont. I mean, I barely believed it when, even when I saw the town for the sign. So. There it is. There it is right <laughs> there. And so when's the last time you were in a parade? I think I, last time I was in a parade was this parade when I was in fifth grade, so like 10 years old, and I was marching for Orchimedia. And you remember that? Yes, ah, I right. do. Good I carried the sign. How could I not remember it? Of course. <laughs> of course. And just a reminder one more time, big fireworks coming up later on tonight. That'll happen right after dusk. And everybody heads down to the state capitol building. Big crowd, lots of fun. And again, another big family affair. You'll go down and you'll see all kinds of food trucks and all kinds of things going on. So you'll know that you are in the epicenter of the 3rd of July parade. Mm -hmm. Leading it off this afternoon, the Montpelier Police Department comes into view. There's one thing you can actually take to the bank in every 4th of July parade will be police and firemen. <laughs> Chief Tony Fakus. Chief Fakus driving the car. And now the color guard. As the color guard comes down through, I want to remind you that the sailors from the USS Montpelier and the USS Vermont, along with the Vermont Governor Phil Scott, are all together for this 4th of July. This is an annual event for the sailors. They look forward to meeting Vermont's people and visiting the local businesses. And coming up right now with the big number one is Governor Phil Scott. Actually, he'll be following, he'll be marching with the uh, sailors, I believe. And now here are the sailors of the SS 765. And coming up next is the 4th Army Band. And the 4th Army Band, the Vermont National Guard, was started in 1907. And the band is made up of citizen soldiers from around New England and New York. They drill one weekend a month, two weeks a year, making music throughout this beautiful state. Right behind them is the Vermont State Employees Credit Union, or Everyone Credit Union. They're proud to be a continuing sponsor, carrying on a tradition of supporting Montpelier's Independence Day celebration with the 3rd of July Parade. Powered by VSECU, a credit union for everybody who lives or works in Vermont with a mission to improve the quality of life for all Vermonters. This year, VSECU and Onion River Outdoors are riding bicycles together to tell our community about the point-to-point -point powered by VSECU. VSECU, 
fun, exciting cycling and running fundraiser coming up to benefit the Vermont Food Bank. Stop by the VSECU tent on the Statehouse lawn today, pick up a free gift, and register for the Point to Point powered by VSECU. What a superb idea. What a great organization bringing fun to everyone. Mm -hmm. Kind of like a bicycle in a parade. I think uh, this would be super fun. I would love to do this. And let's see who's coming along now. Just some more bicycles. And coming up next, we have Representative Mary Hooper, Congressman Peter Welch, Representative Peter Anthony, and Representative Warren Kitzmiller. And Mary Hooper is one of Montpelier's representatives in the House, where she is in her sixth term. She is vice chair of the House Appropriations Committee, and she was mayor of Montpelier for four terms. Mary and her husband have lived in Montpelier for 39 years and know that it's the best city in Vermont. You know, we can't have a, we can't have a parade with a couple of, without a couple of politicians. Oh, you know? definitely not. <laughs> and as Evie mentioned, coming up next is Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman. Warren Kitzmiller is in the mix. Mm -hmm. And Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman is the first farmer elected to statewide office in more than 50 years. He is handing out organic carrots grown on his farm. Right behind the politicians, we have the National Life's sixth annual Do Good Fest. This is coming up in 10 days. Come to National Life on July 13th, hear Michael Frianti and Spearhead, Noah Kahn, Sid and Sound Brother. Gates open at 2.30 in the afternoon. All parking proceeds benefit the branches of Hope Cancer Patient Fund at the Central Vermont Medical Center. This is National Life and the Do Good Festival. <laughs> it is a nice bus. It is a nice bus. It's actually a very attractive bus. <laughs> and coming up behind National Life, and certainly one of the more popular groups in the area, the Berry Tones. This is an approximate 30-member woman's a cappella chorus and quartet singing the barbershop style. Our members come from central Vermont, northern and northeastern Vermont. They're active in the community and they perform public and private events. They do them of all sizes, large and small. They're proud members of the international singing organization Harmony Inc. They travel twice a year to compete in regional and international contests. This year is their 50th anniversary. They love to sing. They love to rehearse. They do it all weekly, striving always for musical excellence. In the company of women who share their passion for music, they celebrate friendships, personal growth through music, leadership, education, and democratic principles. All women and girls are welcome to come and sing. It's Monday evening, 6.30 at the Capital City Grange. Welcome aboard. And coming up next is Montpelier City Council with Mayor Ann Watson leading the charge. Uh, the Montpelier City Council meets on the second and fourth Wednesdays of the month, and you can watch their meetings at Orca online. <laughs> coming up next. What is it without some fife and drum? Uh, the Catamount Pipe Band uh, celebrates its 20th anniversary this year. The all-volunteer competitive pipe band practices every Tuesday at Montpelier High School. The band has traveled to Glasgow to compete in the World Pipe Band Championships four times and placed ninth in the world in their division in 2018. 
And right behind them, the number five of Campbell Motorsports. If you're a Thunder Road fan, you recognize the Campbell family. You recognize the 85, sponsored by our Roto-Rooter. Campbell Motorsports. And right behind them, the Mount Zion. Welcome to Thunder Road. <laughs> Right behind them, the Mount Sinai number three motor corps has been thrilling parades for years. Oh, they're, yeah. da they're daredevil go-karts. They do this to support and raise awareness for the Shiner's Hospitals for children. 22 hospitals in North America that will not turn away a child because of their inability to pay. Shiner's Hospitals for Children love to the rescue. Mount Sinai. I can remember a very sad case when I was a police officer. A young girl along with her brother as a babysitter, tried to cook some oatmeal on a stove and her nightgown got caught on fire. We responded and when we got there, we needed an ambulance right away. And out of nowhere comes uh, a Shriner. He had heard it on the scanner. And when the father arrived at the house, he introduced himself and said, would you please let us take care of this for you? I witnessed myself what the power of the Shriners is, as they did a magnificent job for that little girl with major burns. They never asked for acknowledgement, and it was a treatment of about four years, and that young lady today is married with children, and it's just an incredible, incredible uh, tribute to these magnificent people, and it's all volunteer. Ladies and gentlemen, Mount Sinai number three motor. Oh, that is so wonderful. And then up next is the CVSA, the Central Vermont Skating Association. Uh, the Central Vermont Skating Association is a nonprofit corporation serving Central Vermont communities since 1974. The CVSA's mission is to promote, supervise, and assist in the development of youth skating and hockey programs by providing the best possible experience for all participants, including their spectators. The CVSA continually strives to meet the highest levels of citizenship, sportsmanship, teamwork, physical well-being, and in particular, mutual respect for others. And I know a lot of my friends have played um, hockey and, sk and dead sk skating with them, so I know that they are a really awesome association. Outstanding. <laughs> I love hearing that. Again, another organization with so much volunteer time, so very important. Coming up excuse me, behind the skaters is Sunrise Gymnastics. Sunrise Gymnastics is located in Granger Road in Berlin. They provide safe, fun, and vibrant environments to all kids around the area. They teach life skills through gymnastics. Well, I can't even do a cartwheel, so that's pretty impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was thinking the same thing, but I'm glad you said it first. <laughs> then, of course, Mr. Froggy out there uh, we're from our local radio station. And next is the Green Mountain Self-Advocates. And the Green Mountain Self-Advocates is a disability rights group. They champion the rights of people with intellectual and develop, de developmental disabilities. They support people to be included in their communities. butts in the river. <laughs> Trash tramps. They love the earth and they don't like butts in the water. Uh, the trash tramps are volunteers who pick up litter from Montpelier streets, sidewalks, and parking lots every Tuesday afternoon throughout the year. The tramps are particularly proud of their efforts to collect cigarette butts, which are recycled into plastic decking and park benches. 
all are welcome to join the Tramps on any Tuesday. The group gathers at 1.45 p.m. inside the Montpelier Senior Center, where vests, tongs, and bags are distributed. The Tramps have lots of fun, and their motto is, This work is beneath us. And the, this is the League of Women Voters of Vermont. The League of Women Voters of Vermont wants you to know that every vote counts. Democracy is not a spectator sport. Register today on the State House lawn and vote like your rights depend on it. And following that is Senator Ann Cummings. She's celebrating the 4th with Montpelier. Our longtime senator, ladies and gentlemen, this is Ann Cummings. And after Sen excuse me, Senator Cummings, we have Miss Vermont and Miss Vermont's Outstanding Teen 2019. Miss Vermont and Miss Vermont's Outstanding Teen were crowned in June and have been busy traveling the state, volunteering at all sorts of events. Thank you, ladies, for your service to Vermont. And next up, is the Great Eastern Radio Frank FM, and every and they are everything that rocks at 107.1 Frank FM. <laughs> Great introduction. Yeah, Great thank you. <laughs> I'll tell you though, the speakers on the roof makes me think of beach. Oh yeah. Behind the Froggy Mobile, the Kellogg Hubbard Library is celebrating this summer's reading theme, A Universe of Stories. Along with the famous book cart team, the librarians are pairing up with adults and children from the community to celebrate their favorite books. What are you reading right now? Uh, right now I'm reading a book called Outlander huh? by Diana Gabbard, I think her name is. Just started it. I'm liking it so far. Cool. <laughs> What about you? I'm leading, I'm re, excuse me, I'm reading a book called A Shepherd's Life. Huh. Fascinating book about an, an English shepherd. Nice. Uh, and it's, uh, I'm enjoying it too. Yeah. <laughs> and coming up here are the library cart ladies, and I think I just told you about their appearance in Moscow, yeah. so now you'll get a chance to see them here today. <laughs> Let's hope we can get some syncopated. Uh, yeah, where's the dancing? Uh huh. Well, we're gonna miss it this time. <laughs> Following the library is the Orchard Valley Waldorf School, and the Orchard Valley Waldorf students are sharing their passions, music, art, and the joy of learning. Orchard Valley has three campuses, Child's Garden in Montpelier, Grace Farm Campus in East Montpelier, and the Child Care Center in Montpelier. Drop by for a visit if you're interested. And right behind the Waldorf comes a, a big Montpelier favorite. <laughs> we want to introduce you to the Mountaineers. The Vermont Mountaineers baseball team is a member of the New England Collegiate Baseball League. Over the past 16 seasons, hundreds of collegiate baseball players from all over the United States have come to Montpelier to improve their skills. They play summer baseball. They further the dreams of playing in the major leagues. They've won three championships. They look forward to another successful year, providing Central Vermont with a top-notch baseball an entertainment recreational alternative. Ladies and gentlemen, the Vermont Mountaineers. And it looks like they're handing out stickers and tickets to their games. Nice. Yeah, I would love to score some of those. <laughs> For real? Uh, are they tickets? Yeah. Jackpot. Jackpot. <laughs> Nice. And what's coming up next? Coming Evan? up next is Norwich University. 
Norwich University will commemorate its 200th anniversary with a year-long schedule of special events spanning the nation. From community events to galas in major cities and a homecoming extravaganza, there are many ways to take part in this once-in-a-lifetime celebration. Norwich University, the nation's oldest private military academy. And right behind them is Central Vermont's best country radio station. It's Froggy 100.9. behind them. Oh. <laughs> That's a great sign. <laughs> now let's see what we've got coming up next. Well, the force is obviously with our next group. <laughs> A last minute entry with some really fancy stick work going on in front of me. But of course, if you're a young Jedi, this is exactly the type of training that you have to undergo, <laughs> especially on the 3rd of July. The crowd still loves them. They're putting on a great show. And right behind them, we've got the Central Vermont Little League. The Little League International Affiliates supporting nine Vermont towns, Berlin, Cabot, Callis, East Montpelier, Marshfield, Middlesex, Montpelier, Plainfield, and Worcester. They were formed through a merger in December of 2015. A group of volunteers got together with the idea of keeping baseball and softball at a high quality, and that's exactly what they do. The Little Leaguers of today will be the high school and collegiate players of tomorrow. And following them is the in Indivisible Callus. Indivisible Callus is a group of political activists opposed to the Trump administration. And once again, a fan favorite coming up, and that's the Mount Sinai number three cycle unit. They've been in existence in, since 1980, when a group of, well, say, nobles gathered together, purchased a new 1981 Suzuki, and then they all jumped in and began their long journey to parades all over the Northeast. Almost four decades later, these dedicated riders continue to spread public awareness about free health and care for children at the 22 Shriners Hospitals. Please share with everyone that these guys are in it for the children. Are you a motorcycle rider? No, but my dad is. <laughs> Maybe one day, if my mom will ever let me. <laughs> oh, what a treat this is. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, the Mount Sinai number three motorcycle unit. Let's hear it for the Shriners. Now we got a big daddy motorcycle right here. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think this might be more age appropriate for me. That's what I'm thinking right offhand. And 
following them is Vermonters for Justice in Palestine. They are here to show solidarity with the people of Palestine who've been under brutal occupation for 52 years and ask us to think, what about independence for Palestinians? They're here to show solidarity against borders and walls that imprison people seeking asylum from violence, repression, and extreme poverty. They're here to show solidarity with our African-American brothers and sisters unfairly incarcerated because of the color of their skin. They seek true independence and self-determination for all. Organized by the Vermont Justice for, Vermonters for Justice in Palestine. And they've got a really cute dog with them, so another plus. <laughs> You know, the key, I think, is the 4th of July, it is, it's, a, it's a symbol of freedom. Exactly. It's a symbol of freedom and speech and thought. For fighting Everyone for what belongs. you believe in, yeah. Everyone belongs here, mm -hmm. absolutely. And again, we continue with more of the Israeli occupation yeah. issue. Yo, what do you do? Butterflies, flags. And it looks like a mother and a child. I, yeah. I... And you know, I like it because everybody is welcomed with the same warmth, no matter what their political state. Oh yeah. Yeah. No matter what uniform they wear or don't wear, mm -hmm. everybody is welcome. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to give you permission to dance if you'd like. Okay. You've got some rhythm coming in here. <laughs> All of life is, is rhythm. Oh, it's yeah. Earth's rhythm, and I'll let you take it from there. <laughs> yeah, so this is the Shida, I think I'm saying that correctly. Shida Culture Projects. Um, they offer African drumming, drum making, African dances, cooking, fabric printing, and Anase storytelling, and theater performances in all schools across Vermont and beyond. Oh, and they are rocking it. Next, the Central Vermont Pioneers. This is a sled hockey team with players throughout Central Vermont. They play games all over New England, New York. They're the current state champs for sled hockey. They've got three father-son combos on the team. Ladies and gentlemen, the Central Vermont Pioneers. I especially like the red plaid, uh, they actually have red plaid warm-ups and I think they're the coolest things. <laughs> This looks like a soccer group coming up next. What do you think? Yeah, this, I think this is the Capital Soccer Club, and this is Central Vermont's premier soccer club. Capital Soccer Club offers camps and clinics for youth soccer players throughout the summer and holds tryouts for teams in July. Um, they also host street soccer throughout Central Vermont, as displayed by our players and co coaches today. And right behind that is Austin Smith, the high-throwing, spintastic, fantastic wow. juggler from Burlington, Vermont. He designs juggling routines for brick streets and hardwood stages. He's performed all over the northeastern United States. His juggling is energetic, free-flowing, and snappy. When he's not juggling, Austin loves painting brightly colored art, oh, yeah. working towards solving the world's plastic pollution problems, and drumming gently on the dogs. And Ladies and gentlemen, Austin Smith. And right behind him is the O.M. Fisher home. And that 2019 marks their 100th year anniversary of elder care in Montpelier, Vermont. 
Um, they have been serving seniors within the Montpelier community for generations through their facilities at the Gary Residence and West Westview Meadows. OM Fisher Home wishes to express their thanks to the Montpelier community for its continued support of their facilities and care. <laughs> nice, we're scoring some good things. How are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm leaving you a bag. Thank you. <laughs> well, you know, you get a few fans once in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Once again, Westview Meadows at Montpelier, just a spectacular place. We just had a visit from so many of their employees coming over to say hi to us. And you know, we are. We are just like a family here. We've been here for three years. Everybody looks forward to, to seeing us, and it's, and it's great. Now the Step in Time dancers. The Step in Time line dancers are based out of Randolph and Barrie, Vermont. They've been performing as a group since 2002. The crowd loves this group, and they're always looking for new members. So think about it. Step in Time every time. Right behind them is Miss Vermont USA and Miss Vermont Teen USA. And Miss Vermont USA 2019 is Bethany Garrow from Rutland Town. And Miss Vermont Teen USA 2019 is Jenna Howlett from Bridport. They both competed or completed this past May in Reno, Nevada for the national titles of Miss USA and Miss Teen USA 2019. For more information about their platforms and themselves, please go to MissVermontUSA.net. And coming up next is the Montpelier Climate Action Group. They're citizens from central Vermont who are involved in various climate action groups. They all believe that the threat from climate crisis is an emergency. We support nonviolent climate justice. That's their motto. They demand the government tell the truth about the climate crisis and adopt legally binding policies to reduce the carbon emissions to net zero by 2025. Let's enjoy this show. Now, aside from the masks, we've got some uh, kind of interesting stuff coming down here. Yeah. That, that skeleton's about two stories high. And a Statue of Liberty, it looks like. Very red and puppet. So, I see something here called Orca Media, Channel 15, All Things LGBTQ. Yeah. Um, so this is an Orca Media production. It's seen every two weeks on Orca, and they talk about issues pertaining to the LGBTQ plus community. And this is a pretty special float to me because my little sister is riding on it. Uh, yeah. Outstanding. She's somewhere in there. She's dancing in the crowd. <laughs> what a jolly group. Yeah. And, you know, I'm always driving her to Orca for the productions of these things, so... <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people I know And in then the Central Vermont Roller Derby An empowering group of all genders Embracing a new spin On roller derby You know I tried roller skating once It's not for me, I fell down a lot <laughs> I don't know, I'm looking at this right now Thinking we need to get you some neat <laughs> Helmet <laughs> You've got some pent-up aggression, I think, that maybe you need to hit the blades. <laughs> I actually did the play-by-play -play for a couple of roller derby matches. Ouch! Yeah, they get yeah. aggressive. There's I don't no think I can handle there. it. <laughs> And following them is the Vermont Mutual Insurance Group. Vermont Mutual Insurance Group is proud to honor our everyday heroes. They appreciate those that serve their community in any capacity and are especially grateful to law enforcement, firefighters, and emergency medical technicians and all first responders. And 
coming down next, this beautiful Balavance truck. Thank you to the heroes. Coming up next, we have the Green Mountain Veterans for Peace. The Veterans for Peace are trying to make people aware of the human and financial cost of war. They would like to have everyone consider how each of us would foster for peace. They prefer to have more consideration for the effects before the conflict starts. Let's give peace a chance. White Doves of Peace, wrapping up their portion of the parade. Just to remind you, you're listening and watching to the ORCA presentation of the 3rd of July festivities coming to you from the capital, Montpelier, Vermont. You can get us on the internet at orcamedia.net. Right behind them is the Montpelier Elk, Elks Lodge, number 924. And they're a fraternal order with nearly a million members and a 141-year history, a network of more than 2,000 lodges and communities all over the countries. And they're a generous charitable foundation that gives that each year gives millions in scholarships and an inspiration to a f inspiration to veteran what? An inspiration to, and a friend to veterans and more. <laughs> and you know, it's a great organization. It's so very popular. They do so much for youth. They do so much for our community and the senior citizens. We thank the Elks Club and all their members. This is Montpelier Elks Lodge 924. Silver Tower, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts. But right now is one of my favorites, I've got to tell you. <laughs> This is the Hannaford's Fife and Drum Corps, based in St. Albans, Vermont, originally from Underhill, named after Lieutenant Nathaniel Hannaford, a drum major in the War of 1812. This group was established to keep the history of America alive through music, and I love this. Mm. It must get very hot in those costumes. Now as they present, they prepare for their next presentation. The Guidon holder closest to our camera with all the ribbons that they have won. Those ribbons are won for not only syncopation, but marching and music. The drum major brings them to attention. All eyes are focused on the drum major. The preparation. Period costumes by the maidens in front. She's got the better end of that deal. I think so. <laughs> but of course, there's a message with everything. 
We gotta jump start our little float here first. And so this is the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition. And the Sustainable Montpelier Coalition is sporting on-demand microtransit. This multi-passenger van is zipping around Montpelier, picking you up at your doorstep, doorstep and delivering you to work, school, shop, or recreate. Uh, none of the hassles of car ownership, no hunting for por parking, no hot car in the summer or scraping off snow in the winter, and you will never have to clean it, fill it with gas, or insure it. Uh, check out the app on, this, on your smartphone or call to arrange your pickup. Your ride made easy. Nice. And now the Arbor Day Foundation. Tree City, USA. More colorful costumes light up the afternoon. Just a little jig and a half with some bells on your knees. And so this is on the border of Morris, and they perform English Morris dance, an ancient folk dance tradition from the border of England and Wales. Based in Burlington, they dance around Vermont to mark the changing of seasons with a ruckus joy. And welcome to the Morris Farm. We all know the Morrises, we all know the farm. It is probably the number one tourist destination in central Vermont. Mm -hmm. Morris Farm Sugar Works, making Montpelier sweeter for 225 years. That's right, multiple generations, the Morris Farm. And here is a classic of the Montpelier 4th of, or 3rd of July parade, the State House replica. Yeah, one time for Halloween, my best friend dressed up as the State House and made a costume. That, and she was like, she was the statue on the top of the State House and it just went around <laughs> her. So kind of similar to this. I love it. You know, only in Montpelier do you get that type of Halloween costume. <laughs> Well, as usually happens, we've gotten a little bit out of order, but of course we will soldier on. The Japan American Society of Vermont. They enjoy participating in the July 3rd parade at the capital of Vermont every year. The Japan American Society of Vermont is very happy to be part of the festivities today. coming in. That's Rise Recovery. That has to do with physical fitness, I'm sure. And this is Mayo Healthcare. A uh, locally owned residential care, rehabilitation, and long-term care facility in the neighboring Northfield, and they're celebrating their 80-year anniversary. Um, they have been honored to provide award-winning care to seniors and learn about their rich histories. Mayo Health Center, again, another one of Central Vermont's staples for many, many years. The bubble machine, what's life without a little bubble machine? Reminding us all to vote. 
This is the 80th year as you mentor the Mayo Health Center. And coming up right behind them is the Impeach Trump Group of Central Vermont. Again this year, seeking to make their voices heard in difficult and trying times of our nation. With the most corrupt and unfed president in modern history, the Impeach Trump of Central Vermont encourages all like-minded citizens to contact Bernie Sanders, Patrick Leahy, Congressman Welch to encourage their support for any and all attempts to hold Donald Trump accountable. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the Community National Bank. Um, yes. So the Community National Bank, Vermont's Community Bank, presents the tales of good versus evil with the cast of with the cast members of Avengers Endgame. Uh, they won't let Thanos reign terror on this capital city celebration. Uh, they're wishing a safe and happy Fourth of July to everyone from Community National Bank. And those are some awesome costumes. <laughs> We've got Captain America, <laughs> Thor, Iron Man, the Hulk, that Black could be Widow. The night in Burlington, right there. Oh yeah. <laughs> All the superheroes. And coming up next, the American Red Cross and the Central Vermont Disaster Action Team providing assistance to those in need after a disaster such as a house fire. The team is responsible for setting up and running a shelter during, the, during disasters when families are forced to leave their home. How about some contra dancing? What do you think about that? You know, I've been contra dancing before many times and I really do love it. And so the contra dancing takes place at the Capital City Grange. Um, they've held, been held at the Grange for over three decades and you can join them on the first, third, and fifth Saturdays of the month from 8 to 11 p.m. They've got great bands and callers um, all from all around. And more information can be found at capitalcitygrange.org. Yeah. I'm thinking that's a good time. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I always envy the fiddle player. <laughs> I think it would be really hard to dance and walk at the same time, so that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Coming up next to St. Monica's uh, School, 79 Summer Street, Barrie, Vermont. St. Monica's, the pride of Barrie, the pride of Central Vermont. can go back to a time when St. Monica's was all taught by nuns. Wow. Yes, that's how old I am. <laughs> what a vibrant school, and it's it's just incredible. I enjoy going there. It's fun to visit them with a, kind of a career day, a touch a truck day for us, and they're always so grateful, and it is. It's a beautiful facility. Now, I'm going to go back because here's the second part of uh, Central Vermont Cares. This is the Disaster Action Team. And as I mentioned before, the team is responsible for setting up and running a shelter during disasters when families are forced to leave their homes. Central Vermont Cares, the road to zero. You can find them on, online and you can Google them. There when you need them. All right, another rhythm deal here. You know, let's make this 
this up. Okay. Let's give bees a chance. Yeah. Here we are, the bee all dressed up. Oh, uh, yeah. It's the Honeybee Steel Band. We love our bees. Protect the future. Protect the pollinators. <laughs> Nothing like a steel drum. Uh. All together now, the puppet troop. Just a very fun and frolicky game. And then, all together now, the Resurrection Baptist Church. The Resurrection Baptist Church helps clean up after Montpelier's 3rd of July parade every year. We're always grateful to have them here. What a great day. That's going to wrap it up for our parade today. Evie Casarda, thank you so much. You have just been a pleasure. <laughs> thank you so much. I've had a lot of fun. I hope you have a wonderful summer and good luck in college. I want a full report. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for tuning in to this 3rd of July parade. You've been watching this on Orca Media. We thank you for tuning in. So long, everybody.